August, which means this month we have Gen Con, the best four days of gaming. Well, tabletop gaming, anyway. In the spirit of that, this month I've got a couple book reviews of novels based on tabletop gaming worlds. Well, I guess technically three, because Legend of the Force counts because of all the various Star Wars licensed games. Anyway, in this case, at this time I'm taking a look at a licensed novel based on the first set of the Magic the Gathering collectible card game, or trading card game as they call as the kids these days call it. Magic the Gathering, of all the TCGs that I have played, has held on to me more than any other game. More than WWE Rod Deal. More than the Star Wars CCG, or the Star Trek CCG, both in Decipher, or even by Schwartz. The reason for that, more than the raw play of the game and the people I was playing with, was the world of the game, the lore of the game, and how it was conveyed. While cards like Goblin Grenadier would certainly have a degree of humor to them, the game always took the world somewhat seriously. In particular, what always captured my imagination was the world of the first few expansions, Dominaria. The cards of those expansions hinted at an epic conflict between the brothers Uzra and Mishra, and how their conflict shaped the destiny of the world. However, I rel never really got enough to spell things out in full. I knew they involved the Weak Stone and the Might Stone, how their matter, their, how their powers complemented and counteracted each other. Well, many years after the first sets came out, Wizards of the Coast put out a series of novels telling the stories of the various magic expansions, starting with the saga of Urza and Mishra. This is the story that, really, I wanted to see told for an incredibly long time, and coming into this book there was always the possibility that it would leave me disappointed that the story I'd imagined in my mind couldn't match the story told in the book. I'm very glad to say that my expectations were met and exceeded. Numerous fantasy series, particularly the epic fantasy variety, have been set in worlds that had, had at some point in the past, suffered some sort of magical apocalypse, whether it's with Lord of the Rings and the Fall of Numenor, or the Cataclysm in Dragonlands, or the Fall of Mithranor in the Forgotten Realms, or the sinking of Atlantis in the Hyperborean Age and Conan's stories. But this... This is truly something else. The story of Mishra and Urza is truly a man-made apocalypse. It's like the magical equivalent of global thermonuclear war. And consequently, it makes for a story that has far more punch to it than the old testament-scale destruction of those earlier works. Even with fantasy deities, which have much more in common with Norse or Grecian gods in terms of their relatability, they have a sense of distance and alienness to them that blunts the blow a little whenever they unleash their wrath upon the world. This conflict, however, is between mortal beings, just like everyone else, and that changes everything. It turns the story of Urza and Mishra into far more of a tragedy. The start of the conflict is in impulsive actions leading to consequences that can't be undone, related to the moment where the two get their respective stones. Urza and the Might Stone... Mishra and the Weak Stone. In turn, as time passes, Mishra becomes more and more hungry for power, and so things end up reaching a point of no return. If Mishra wins, he will enslave and torture the world, so Urza feels he has to take more and more drastic and it presents excessive actions in order to stop him. But this ravages the world more and more over the course of the conflict, as more and more of the energies and resources of the world are taken up in this and consumed by the fires of war, and less and less places are left that are unscathed or untouched by the conflict, and ultimately that's less and less hospitable. It's an apocalypse that feels truly apocalyptic, that the world has changed in ways that will impact the lives of people for thousands of years after the book's events, and it makes for one of the most riveting works of fantasy fiction that I've ever read, because it's an apocalypse also at a personal level, not just a global or cosmic scale. Um, with like the fall of Numenor in the Cimmerillion, on the one hand, it's catastrophic. It's a biblical event, but it's also told with a degree of biblical detachment. Here, it's at such a personal level where Urzra and Mishra and their friends and students are so much more of an active part of the book of the of the book's story that you have a sense of the physical stakes and personal stakes of what's going on 
and the catastrophe that is unfolding in a much grander way than, again, in the Silmarillion. It causes this to be one of the most riveting books, works of fantasy fiction that I've ever read. I can't recommend it enough. Even if you're familiar, with the unfamiliar, I should say, with Magic the Gathering and Dominaria, the book still holds up and stands alone incredibly well. If you only read one Magic the Gathering novel, you pick up this book, read it in its entirety, and stop here, I think it'd be a satisfying experience, to a degree. There's certainly stuff that comes after, but if your exposure to Magic the Gathering starts here and ends here, I don't think you'd be disappointed. There are links to where you can find a copy of the book in the show notes. In two weeks, I'll be shifting gears to books based on trading card games, or from books based on trading card games to books based on tabletop RPGs, in order to take a look at the first novel in the Dragonlance Chronicles series, Dragons of Autumn Twilight. I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.